The United States of Africa is the dream of African leaders and philosophers like Gavi, Nkrumah, Diop, Gaddafi, Lumumba, and so on. But can this dream be achieved? I am S.D. Chimbero Mwonsawa. I'm an author, author of the wisdom and the power of African unity, author of 222 questions and answers about African progress. I'm the leader of One Africa Family OAF, and our vision is to lead Africans from last to first. The United States of Africa can be achieved, and there are several ways in which we can unite Africa. We can learn from how nations of the world united and know how we can best unite Africa. For example, in the year 3100 BC, Firunama unified Egypt through warfare. In the year 550 BC, King Cyrus unified Middle and Persia through warfare. In the year 221 BC, Shi Huangti unified China through warfare. And in the year 1206 AD, Genghis Khan unified Mongolia through warfare. However, in the year 728 BC, King Diocese unified Media through administering justice, equity, and peace, and becoming the first king of the United Media Kingdom in the year 728 BC. These are some of the ways through which nations have united. But Africa must not go through warfare to unite. There is the best way to unite Africa, a way that to carry everybody along, a way that is guaranteed to bring true unity and to be peaceful and to bring true success after the unification. And that is through an act of parliament. And a parliament is an institution that brings the leaders and people of a nation together. And it is the best and safest way to unite a nation. Africa can unite through an act of parliament. But how can Africa unite through an act of parliament? First of all, Africa must have a parliament. Currently, Africa does not have a parliament. Africa have has what we call the Pan-African Parliament, which was formed through a series of treaties and negotiations. First was the Abuja Treaty 1991, which was part of the treaties that gave birth to the African Economic Community. Then there was the 2000 uh, Lome Declaration, which was made in Lome, Togo, which was the treaty that signed the Pan-African Parliament into existence, but was ratified in the year 2001 at Site in Libya. The Pan-African Parliament sat for the first time on the 18th of March 2004 at Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, but the seat is at Midrand, South Africa. The Pan-African Parliament has five representatives from different African states, and the members are elected by the different parliaments of the different African states. And the Pan-African Parliament does not have, have the power to make laws, it only has consultative and advisory powers. Africa must have a full-fledged parliament, and that is why there is the Malabo Declaration of 2014, which was made on the 27th of June 2014 at Malabo, the capital of Equatorial Guinea, to give the Pan-African Parliament powers to become a full-fledged legislative arm of the African government. The treaty requires about 28 members to be ratify or to come into effect, but currently only 12 African states have signed that treaty or that protocol. African nations must sign that treaty and have a full African parliament that will give Africa laws and be able to sign treaties on behalf of the people of Africa instead of depending on the African Union heads of states. That is the first step to the, towards the creation of the United States of Africa. The Pan-African Parliament also, the African Parliament when it's formed, must have members directly elected from the different states in Africa and should have at least 20 members from each African state. 20 times 55 give us 1,100 members of the African Parliament, which is what we're supposed to have. And this Parliament should then be able to make laws on behalf of the people of Africa. And that is the first step towards the creation of continental state of Africa. Secondly, the African Parliament must pass a law creating the African Ethnic Congress, a congress where the ethnic groups of Africa will come together to discuss the issues that relate to the ethnic groups of Africa in view of the United States of Africa. Thirdly, the African Parliament must pass into existence the institution 
of the African Economic Parliament, a parliament made up of statisticians, made up of economists from different parts of Africa, at least 10 by African states, to discuss issues that pertain to economics and how best to structure the African economy for it to work perfectly. Fourthly, the African Parliament must then move a motion for the creation of the United States of Africa. Once the motion is passed, then public hearings, consultations will begin. The different members of the Pan -Afri uh, African Parliament should then go and sensitize their people about the United States of Africa. The Ethnic Congress will also do the same thing within the ethnic, to their ethnic groups, and the African Economic Parliament will also begin to make consultations on how best to have an economy for Africa that will work very well. After a period of about three years, when there's enough hearing, social media contribution, debate, and so on, we can then have a constitution to work for the people of Africa. And every other institution needed to be put in place will be put in place. And that is then how we then sign the African um, continent into one nation, into existence. Then have the United Continent of Africa or the United States of Africa. This method will carry everybody along and will guarantee peace and a nation that will last, if not forever. Nations of the world have also united through this means. For example, the United States of America united, united through an act of parliament. When the United States Continental Congress was formed in the year 1774, when 12 out of 13 colonies of, the, of America sent their representatives to Philadelphia, and those delegates stayed here from the 5th of September 1774 to the 26th of September of October 1774. That was the first Continental Congress of the US, and that was where America united for the first time. The Continental Congress later formed the United States Continental Army in the year 1775 and declared the independence of America. 4th of July 1776. If not for this Continental Congress, America wouldn't have been one nation as we have it today. America would have probably been 13 countries or 40 countries or 50 countries like what we have in South America, in Europe, in Asia and Africa. But because of that act of Congress or Parliament, America became one nation and united. Also, Britain is a product of an act of parliament or acts of parliament. Britain or Great Britain was formed first on the 1st of May 1707 when the parliament of England and Wales and that of Scotland were united. And also the United Kingdom was formed on the 1st of January 1801 when the parliament of Great Britain and that of Ireland marched together. These are examples of nations that are united through acts of parliament and that is the best way to unite Africa. If African leaders and people want the United States of Africa or the United Continent of Africa, the ball is in our court to play. We now know how to go about it. God bless Africa and God bless the future United Continent or United States of Africa.